Hi, I'm Donovan Brown with another episode of Azure Friday. I'm here with Alex, and today we're going to be talking to you about Azure Function Proxies. Welcome to the show, Alex. Hey, thanks for having me on. So what do you do here at Microsoft? Uh, I'm a PM on the Functions team. I own a lot of our API scenarios. Okay, cool. So what is a function proxy and why do I why do I care? Yeah, so it's basically our serverless API toolbox. Um, it's running in the functions runtime, but that's about as close to functions as it gets. It's basically a bunch of API routing and compositing tools, kind of a light API management for anybody looking to build an API. I got it. So it's API management without some of the like throttling and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. why would I use this over like an app service? Because I can just spin up an app service and put an API in there. Yeah, awesome question. So proxies is serverless. So it means that when your proxy is running and getting traffic, you're getting billed at the consumption rate. But when it's not running, it's totally free. Oh, I see. Okay. So yeah, whereas if I was using an app service, as long as that app service is running, I'm paying for it even if no one is hitting my API. Yeah, absolutely. Got it. So what are you going to show us today? Uh, so yeah, I'm going to show us the process of building an API if you were to use proxies. Okay. Um, there's a couple of really common scenarios that we see lots of API developers hit. Um, the first is they want to build some sort of mock API. Um, so if you get like a contract to build an API, you want to immediately validate that that's the right thing, not build the whole API and learn that it's the wrong thing. Okay. Um, or if you have like a mobile team building against your API, you want them to be unblocked as okay. fast as possible. Got it. So this would be good for testing scenarios, early development, without having to make a huge investment in, oh my god, we've done this, and now all of a sudden it doesn't feel right, doesn't have the right shape, doesn't have the right interface, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hop right into the portal and walk through that scenario. Okay. Um, so I'm here in a blank function app. This one is called NYT Movies API. So eventually, it's going to display movie reviews, but for the meantime, I just want to unblock the mobile team that's building against this API. Okay. Um, so I'm going to add a new proxy in here. Um, it's in the function's runtime, so you have to make a new function app to do it. Uh, I'm going to call this proxy movies, uh, and I'm going to have it live at slash movie slash title. Um, and you can see here this route is basically the URL that the proxy lives at, and we have variables that we can embed in the route or any of these other overrides. So I'm taking in the title in the route, um, and because it's a mock API, there's no backend URL. We're just pop we're just populating this response info. So I'm going to have it return 200 OK, and then I'm going to give it some sample movie data. Um, okay. So I happen to have a sample movie review here. Um, and something kind of interesting about this, we have this nice JSON editor, um, but I've embedded the title here into the response in a couple of places. Okay. Um, so I'm putting in the display and in a couple of different places in the description. Um, and this is really going to help the team building against this to have something sort of approximating a real API. Awesome. You know, if you had this in a list, you would have different info in each list item. Um, so I'm going to test this API really quickly. No need to do some sort of crazy deployment. I'm just going to go to this URL from the portal, and I'm going to give it just a, a random movie. Um, and it's going to give me back a mock response for that, um, which was pretty quick. Um, this is obviously not matching the movie exactly, sure. but we'll, uh, we'll fix that later. Um, so that's that's the sort of thing that as an API developer you'd want to be able to do as fast as possible. Is there any way that I could have logic to where if title equals this, then I want you to give a different response, or is it pretty much just you're going to get the same one every single time? Uh, no, you can just do those variable transforms. That's more like API management territory. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, this is a, this is a mock API. So I pretty much immediately want to replace this with a real API. Got it. I'm a developer now. Everybody's built against this mock API. Um, and I'm going to use the actual New York Times Movies API. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but they have a bunch of APIs over there at the New York Times. I have no idea. Um, and I'm going to show you another more advanced feature of proxies. We have this awesome portal editor, but lots of developers just want to be in code. And so in the portal, we have this code editor that we can open up. Um, this used to be Visual Studio Online, and now it's just our editor. Okay. Um, and it gives us this proxies.json view of your proxy. Um, this is going to be the same thing that we show in Visual Studio a little bit later, um, in Visual Studio Code. Okay. Uh, but you can get to it here in the portal without having to load up your whole IDE. Um, so I have this mock API here in the portal, and I'm just going to replace it with the API that I had written earlier. Um, and this is going to point to the New York Times API, uh, and it's going to do a couple of other things. Um, it's pretty common when you're building an API that whatever you actually built has some implementation quirks that don't quite match whatever the like contract was. Um, so in this case, the New York Times Movies API wants the movie as a query parameter and not in that URL path. Okay. And they want me to append an API key. Okay. Um, and so I'm doing something really cool in here. I'm actually using an app setting to insert this API key into the proxy. Um, this is really cool. It's deployed with the function. 
Um, and it allows me to isolate secrets or any sort of information that I want a platform administrator to change from my actual logic. Okay. So like I could check this code into a public repo or put it on a public video without exposing my API key to the whole world. Perfect. Um, so this is automatically saved. Uh, so I should be able to go in here in my API, refresh this URL, and get back real movie reviews. And there we go. I'm getting back real movie reviews. The developer didn't have to change anything. They didn't have to update a version. They didn't have to change their schema at all. Okay, so what I've so make sure I'm following. So we went in, we mocked out a very quick API. Yeah. And we understand now what the signature is. It basically has movie and then the title of the movie that I want. And then you wired up almost like a pass through to the actual New York Times. So I'm still hitting your API, yeah. but then you're then going off and sending this information to the New York Times, taking the input and giving it back to me. And what you showed me was that the signature that I use is different than the signature of the New York Times, so I had to massage it a little bit, which I did in that JSON in the little snippet of code. Yeah. All right, great. And now the people who use my API are actually using the New York Times API. Yeah, that's correct. All right, got it. Or they could be using any other backend. Sure, API. whatever. I just you just chose to use a New York API at this particular choice. Yeah, Wait, got it. Yeah. And what happened to that little? And this is still using proxy, but what happened to that mock data? Like, so this mock thing now is just mm -hmm. gets ignored, or can I still use it for development? Uh, yeah, I just deleted that when I overwrote it and overwrote it in the editor. Got it, got um, it. But yeah, you could just as easily copy it and have another proxy. And we went to the editor in that other screen. Would there have been a way here on this UI for me to have made that change to the API? Yeah, absolutely. We have this whole request and response override view. Um, so you can see my response overrides I here see. in a visual form. Got it. So this is a graphical um, a representation of the JSON that you pasted into the editor. So it's six one way, half a dozen other. Whatever you feel more comfortable with, I could have done it here or done it there. Same end result. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, got it. So yeah, I'm going to do one more thing to this API. Um, the last kind of common scenario after you have your API built is to extend it in some way. Okay. Um, and usually you want to do that without trying to break anything in production, without even touching any of the code that you've already deployed. Got it. Um, so I'm going to use proxies for another really neat scenario to host a single page application here in the same URL. Um, and this is really cool, especially if you're looking to move out of a whole server deployment. Um, you could have like a really simple web page without having to spin up an app service instance and okay. pay for that every month. Um, so I'm doing this super simply. I'm just proxying to an HTML file that I have up in blob storage. Okay. Um, so I'm going to call this proxy home. The route template is just slash. Um, and the backend URL is that blob storage. Um, and this file is actually going to call out to an API on another function app, um, but it could just as easily be calling back to a function running in the same function app. Um, so if I go to my root URL, I get a nice little single page application, and it has a very simple API that just gets me server time at that other function app. I see. Um, so what we could have also done, as you were just describing, is I could have this single page app. So this spa here could actually be calling the movies proxy that we decided before and show me the list of the reviews of whatever it is I typed in. But of course, it would be a lot better than seeing raw JSON yeah. because in that spa, I could then go ahead and polish the data and make it look better. Yeah, absolutely. And then because it's a function, I'm only getting paid if and only if someone is actually hitting it, not like an app service where I'm paying for it all the time. Yeah, and Got because it. it's a function, you get an awesome free charter. You get a million free executions a month. Wow. Okay. Um, so even oh wow. So not only do I only pay when someone's hitting it, I only pay if someone hits it for the millionth and first time. Yeah. 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 Wow. So I can see this being free for a lot of the APIs I write. I wish they were popular <laughs> enough <laughs> yeah. to have to be charged for, but they're not. Yeah. Well, All I'm right. really excited that you know once your API is popular enough, hopefully you can spend a little bit to uh, run that. Service. Perfect. Now, do you think once I've gotten to the point where I'm doing over a million of these a day, that I would be moving to? Like API management, or would I stay here? When when do I? When's the signal to me that okay, Donovan, you've outgrown using proxies. You need to go and do something more mature. Uh, yeah, quick. It's a million a month. A um, million a month. Great, <laughs> yeah. not a day. Okay. Um, but yeah, I see when you start to need some of those more advanced routing features. Um, so some more complicated transforms, or if you want to do like rate limiting. Gotcha. Um, APIM has like a whole developer onboarding portal that lots of people love. Okay, great. Um, so what else do you have to show us here? Uh, yeah, so I have we have a whole local experience for proxies. Okay. Um, you can run it with the local runtime, and you can write proxies in in uh, Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio or just any text editor if you feel so inclined. Um, so I'm here in Visual Studio Code, and I have a local function in here. 
Um, over on the left, I have just a simple JavaScript function inside of this function app, and then I have this proxies.json file. Okay. Um, and here, it's populated with just a super simple proxy. Mm -hmm. um, this is another mock API, and it's replicating the hello serverless example that we load up in a lot of new functions. Okay. Um, and something really cool in here, because we're away from the portal, um, Visual Studio Code has a little bit extra to help us write this JSON file. Um, we have the schema here, and so if I hover over any of these pieces of information, I actually get the inline documentation, which I think is super cool. And as I start typing in here, um, I actually get um, IntelliSense of all of the different proxies features. Great. Whenever I see something like this happening in code, my number one question is, what extension did I have to install to get this? Because I'm sure this didn't come out of the box this uh, way. This is, I think this is the coolest thing about Visual Studio. Any JSON with a schema does this. Perfect. Um, so there's no extension required to get this exact experience. Right. But the actual functions was an extension. Yeah. OK, yeah. great. So what extension do we need to do to make sure that we have both of them? So any JSON with a schema, Visual Studio Code is going to give us this amazing experience. But to get that Azure Functions down here in my activity here, I'm sure I had to install an extension. Uh, yeah. There's an Azure Function extension that okay. is just an extension of the Azure CLI. Perfect. Um, right. And I actually like that you can use the Azure CLI outside of Visual Studio yep. Code. Um, so I'm actually going to run this proxy locally. Um, and I like to use the extension just in PowerShell. Um, okay. I like to not get so cramped inside of that Visual Studio Understood. window. Understood. Um, so I'm going to do func host start. And this is going to scan that local function. And it's going to show me both my function, my, uh, my proxy, and that JSON function. Okay. Um, and an interesting point here, as far as the function runtime is concerned, proxies are just functions with a precompiled Block, like box. Okay. Um, it doesn't know that it's got all that nice good proxies bits in it. Um, so it just shows me two HTTP triggered functions. Okay. In the portal, we separate them out for you, but as far as you're concerned, they're just functions with our code in them. Okay. Um, so it gives me these two APIs, and I'm going to use Postman here locally to test that proxy. Got it. Um, so I have it pointed at localhost, and I have a query parameter for my name, which is proxies, and it's going to tell me hello proxies. Got awesome. It. Um, and I can see over here in the terminal, it's giving me logs that it executed that function. Perfect. Um, so now I want to point this proxy at a local function, just the same way that I did in the portal to make this API now more live. OK. Um, and something that's really cool, when you're developing locally, you obviously don't have the same URL for your local functions as your cloud functions. Right. Um, so we have a localhost keyword that lets you point at local functions. Um, and it's really neat. In the back end, it's actually directly um, po pointing the request at um, the local function. It's not going back to the front end. It's not going back to the internet. It's taking that HTTP request and sending it straight to the function. OK. Um, so it's way faster than going to a separate function app or like a separate instance somewhere else. All right, perfect. Um, so and yeah. then, so how am I going to change this when we, or I'm probably jumping ahead. So mm -hmm. great local development, but eventually I'm going to want to put this back up in Azure. So what modif are you going to show us the modifications necessary to take this local thing and then put it back in Azure? Uh, no, I'm just going to show you running it locally. All right, got um, it. But there is a whole deployment flow um, inside of the CLI, and there's a bunch of different videos of other people Perfect. showing deployment. All right, we'll make sure that those are in the, in the, the notes for the show because yeah. we want to make sure this is always exciting to work on work locally and be able to develop much quicker than having to always make the changes in the portal. Mm -hmm. But we always got to make sure that once we're done, we got to get it back into the portal some way. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to have to duplicate my work. There has to be a deployment mechanism for that. Yeah. One important note: nothing changes when you add proxies. It's the same as deploying any other function to Perfect. Azure. Perfect. Okay. Great. Um, so yeah, when I made this change, the function runtime, just like it runs in the cloud, it, locally it's scanning for new code changes. Okay. Um, so I didn't have to stop and start the runtime to nice. see my new logic. Um, so if I go into Postman and call that exact same API, it should now send to the J the JavaScript, and the JavaScript gives a little bit of a different response. You Make know, sure it's you JavaScript. Know. It's a little bit more colloquial. <laughs> um, awesome. So yeah, that's everything I have to show today Very in proxies. Cool. Thank you so much. So we're learning all about Azure Function proxies here on Azure Friday.